To become a war chief of the Crow Nation, a man must do four things prize of a stealthy Crow warrior. One, touch an enemy without killing them. Two, seize an enemy's weapon. Three, lead a successful war party. And four, steal an enemy's horse. Surprisingly, one of the last men to ever complete these tasks did so not in the Wild West, but in the middle of World War II Europe. He was a U.S. soldier named Joe Medicine Crow, and he was to eventually become known as the last war chief. Joe Medicine Crow was born in the Apsalage, or Crow Tribe Reservation, by Lodgegrass, Montana, in 1913. In his own words, quote, With incense of burning cedar and the singing of sacred songs, I came into the world. I was singing, too, but they probably thought I was wailing. He was raised on the reservation by his Crow grandparents, as custom dictated, learning from the rich war stories of his grandfather, White Man Runs Him, who was part of the Battle of the Little Bighorn, serving under Lieutenant George Custer. His father was also a war chief, and one of his great uncles had also fought in the Battle of Little Bighorn. The warring traditions were passed on to him and imprinted in his upbringing. He was taught to hunt, ride horses bareback, fight, and be honorable. His grandfather even encouraged him to run barefoot on the snow in sub-zero temperatures. After his tribal upbringing, Medicine Crow pursued higher education, gaining an associate degree, and then a bachelor's in sociology and psychology. He later even obtained a master's degree in anthropology from USC, being the first of his tribe to attain such an educational level. He was further working on earning a PhD in anthropology when World War II broke out, and his focus shifted to aiding the United States in the war effort. Medicine Crow worked briefly as a teacher at an Indian school, and then at a shipyard in Bremerton, Washington, before he enlisted in the U.S. Army in 1943, joining the 103rd Infantry Division. The Apsalage, or Crow, state four requirements that can make a man of the tribe a war chief. For the first task, the warrior must make physical contact with an opposing foe without ending their life. They call this a counting coup. For the second task, he must disarm an enemy. For the third task, he must lead a successful military expedition and live to tell the tale. For the final task, the warrior must steal a horse, a prized possession amongst Native Americans from the enemy. As part of the 103rd Infantry Division, Medicine Crow was sent to the front line in France to fight in the war against German troops. Each time before entering a battlefield, Medicine Crow would put on his red war paint, made of ochre and water, on his arm beneath the uniform, and place an eagle feather under his helmet for holy protection. With his warrior heritage, he was more than prepared when on March 15, 1945, he was tasked with leading a squad of seven, each carrying explosives along the German Siegfried Line. This western wall on the other side of the French Magnol line had been under assault by Allied forces since August of the previous year with alternating success. It was an apparent suicide mission. His commanding officer armed Medicine Crow and his team with TNT and indicated a bunker to target. The commanding officer reportedly told him, quote, If anyone can do this, it's probably you. Leading the assault into enemy lines, dodging bullets and avoiding barbed wire, Medicine Crow successfully reached the bunker along with his seven men, and opened up a path past the Siegfried Line. Legend has it that Medicine Crow was the first American foot soldier to cross into German territory, but such a claim cannot be corroborated. With this success, he completed a step towards becoming a war chief, as he had led a successful military expedition and lived to tell the tale. Furthermore, this action would earn him U.S. military recognition in the form of a Bronze Star Medal for heroism. Once on enemy territory, the infantry division encroached on Musingen, where they fought the Germans on the streets. While pacing down an alley, Medicine Crow crashed into a German soldier, helmet against helmet. They both fell to the ground. With his own rifle, Medicine Crow yanked the German's rifle out of his hands, effectively disarming him and completing yet another step on his walk to becoming a war chief. Feeling that shooting a disarmed man would be dishonorable, Medicine Crow dropped his own rifle. 
according to accounts from Medicine Crow. The German and American instead struggled against each other in physical combat. The match ended with Medicine Crow wrapping his hands around the German's throat, ready to strangle him to death. Yet with what little energy was left in him, the German cried out, Mama, bracing himself for death. The shriek humanized the enemy soldier in the eyes of Medicine Crow, who calmed down and let go of him, effectively getting Crow closer to becoming a war chief, since he had performed a counting coup. It didn't take long for the Germans in the town to surrender, avoiding what could have been a slaughter, rather than a fight. All Joe Medicine Crow needed to do now was steal a horse, and he would be eligible to be titled War Chief by the Upsalaga. However, horses were not as common in the field as tanks. It seemed like the final step would go unfulfilled. The very next day, the infantry division started to make its way to the Danube River. While scouting, the Native American noticed some enemies on horseback through his binoculars. The American soldiers sneakily followed the Germans back to a farmhouse that served as a station for senior officials. By spying on the station, Medicine Crow discovered that as many as 50 thoroughbred horses were kept in a corral. The commanding officer ordered an attack at the crack of dawn, but Medicine Crow did not want the horses harmed in the crossfire, so he asked permission to sneak in and liberate them. Medicine Crow armed himself with only a rope and a Colt 1911 pistol. Vigilantly, and moving with the stealth of a trained hunter, he walked by a shed where guards were resting. Once inside the stable, he recalled approaching the most beautiful and confident-looking horse. With his rope, he made a bridle so he could maneuver the animal. He opened the corral gate, mounted the horse, and herded all fifty horses with a war scream. He rode away with the animals while singing a traditional Absalaga song while the bombing of the farmhouse began, completing the last step to becoming a war chief. At the end of the war, he assisted in the liberation of a concentration camp in Poland by driving a jeep through the gates with his commanding officer. That was his last act of valor before returning to the U.S. Upon arriving to the reservation in Montana, he informed the elders of his actions during the war and was officially welcomed as a war chief, and in all likelihood, became the last war chief of the Crow tribe. After returning to his tribe as a war chief, Medicine Crow continued to serve his community. In time, he took the mantle of tribal historian and anthropologist. He labored as an appraiser for 32 years for the U.S. Bureau of Indian Affairs and continued to represent his tribe both at home and abroad. When the Crow Central Education Commission was established in 1972, he served as a member of the board. He continued to serve the commission, as well as the traditional circle of Indian elders and youth which was formed in 1977. He participated in this council from its inception with the purpose of preserving Native American culture, values, and views as they integrate with contemporary lifestyles and play a role in the political spectrum. He was asked to speak at the Custer Battlefield Museum, the College of Little Bighorn, and several other U.S. colleges during his life after the war. At the turn of the century, he was asked to speak at the United Nations Summit focused on religion and spirituality. Instead of speaking, he sang. In his own words, he, quote, sang a Crow Indian song welcoming all the spiritual leaders throughout the world to America, the land of Indian people. And I said something like this. When a white man makes peace, he writes it down on paper, but soon breaks it. But when an Indian makes peace, he does so in his heart and never breaks it. When we stand side by side in the circle of no beginning and no ending, the first maker, creator of all things, is in the center. He hears the words of supplication and blesses us with his infinite love, which is peace itself. He concluded the doctorate that he'd been working on at the time that World War II broke out. Medicine Crow went on to publish a dozen books, recording the history, culture, and customs of the Crow tribe. War Chief was not the only title Medicine Crow obtained. He was granted three honorary doctorates, including one from his alma mater, USC, in 2003. He was knighted into the French Légion d'Honneur, receiving the Chevalier Medal in 2008 for his feats during the Second World War. In addition to the Bronze Star given to him for breaching the Siegfried Line, he gained a World War II Victory Medal, a European, African, Middle Eastern Campaign Medal, and a Good Conduct Medal from the American military. 
Finally, in August of 2009, President Barack Obama bestowed the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian honor granted by the United States, on Joe Madison Crow for his dedication to the country and the Native American population. 95 years of age at the time, Crow performed and led a ceremonial dance afterwards. On April 3rd of 2016, Joe Madison Crow passed away in Billings, Montana, after he had lived to the age of 102. He was buried with full military honors, and Governor of Montana Steve Bullock tweeted out about the war chief that he will, quote, forever serve as an inspiration for all Native Americans and all Montanans. Mm -hmm.